Unlearn, let go of past success to achieve extraordinary results. By Barry O'Reilly. In this summary, you will learn the following. How to use the three elements of the cycle of unlearning. How to use unlearning to facilitate change, respond to customer concerns, and free your employees to improve and innovate. Key points. If your system no longer delivers the results you want, unlearn it. When you enter the cycle of unlearning, you will progress through three steps, unlearn, relearn, and breakthrough. Think big about goals, but implement change by adopting small, easy habits. Leadership conditioning. The way you've always done your job can be an obstacle to unlearning. Provide a generative work culture that makes it safe to fail. Relearn by taking action and putting change into practice. Theory can't build the new habits that cause transformation. Measure outcomes, not outputs. Pausing to reflect leads to breakthroughs. Encourage the employees closest to the problem to solve it. They have the best information. Build in feedback loops, especially from customers, to correct your course. A continuously learning organization builds in the habits that keep generating cycles of unlearning. Summary coming back. In 2010, Serena Williams was ranked as the world's number one female tennis player. But after she stepped on a piece of glass, she couldn't get her game back in order even long after her foot healed. In 2012, she suffered a crushing defeat to a player ranked 111th. She doubted if she'd ever be on top again. Such doubts come when the methods that worked to get you to where you are today no longer work to keep you in place. How do you adapt? Often, the obstacle to change is an old method or mindset that you need to unlearn. Recognize that the only true failure is the failure to learn, so learn fast. After her defeat, Williams unwound at Patrick Maradoglu's French Tennis Academy. She found his insights helpful, and hired him as her coach to prepare for Wimbledon. He helped her unlearn what she knew. Williams and Maradoglu set their sights on a big goal, a comeback Grand Slam win, and focused on small changes to build trust and confidence. Their collaboration led to breakthroughs and strengthened Williams's resolve to bounce back. In the summer of 2012, Williams won Wimbledon and the Olympics. The unlearning cycle, unlearn, relearn and breakthrough. When the system you use isn't working, find the courage to realize you must change. Pinpoint what you need to unlearn. How can you think big but start out small? Be confident that you can find a better path to good results. As you unlearn self-limiting habits, you also relearn your perspectives and absorb new information. As you deliberately relearn, you build confidence. Unlearning and relearning can lead to a breakthrough. You can't think your way to a breakthrough, only action will work. When you have a breakthrough, assess the lessons you've learned and chart a course for the next challenge. What separates truly great environments from the rest of the pack is a generative, performance-oriented culture where cooperation is high and there's a comfort with discomfort. International Airlines Group IAG, is the multi-billion dollar company that owns Aer Lingus, British Airways and other carriers. Its leaders felt that sending senior executives to periodic workshops wasn't increasing their level of innovation, so the company removed them from their posts for eight weeks and charged them with starting new businesses to disrupt the airlines. In the process, they disrupted themselves and their thinking. One of these executives believed he had a million-dollar idea to revamp the way people book flights. After repeated testing, he found that people hated his proposed system. He realized the problem was his idea, not the customer. 
he effectively unlearned all he had learned about how he solved problems. Thus he entered the cycle of unlearning. The group developed first-class innovations, and these leaders took the cycle of unlearning back to their divisions. Overcoming obstacles. Leadership conditioning, the way you learn to do your job, can impede unlearning. Obstacles include unconscious biases, the ego feeding belief that you are right, lack of curiosity, corporate cultures that reward the status quo, and the like. You assume that working hard and knowing the right answer is the path to corporate success, and that failure is not an option. Success reinforces this rigid stance, because leaders fear any change to what seems to be working. Corporate cultures are often power-oriented or rule-oriented, and the way things have always been done stymies progress. If you're having a hard time deciding on what to focus on, consider what challenges you're avoiding, where you're taking the easy option, or when you're not living up to your expectations or can't figure something out. Having a cycle of unlearning system in place lets you disrupt yourself instead of having the inevitable unforeseen crisis surprise you. Take action to change your mindset. Build a generative culture that fosters cooperation and risk-taking by providing an environment of encouragement and safety. Make unlearning a part of your company's culture. Unlearning. When you change the way you act as a leader, you will also change the way you view your work, your problems and your world. Consider your goals and specify your challenges. Analyze the behaviors that you or your team display in the wake of success. Define these behaviors so they are quantifiable. Then move out of your comfort zone. Recognize what no longer works. Challenge your beliefs. Write down your goals and your future vision of success. Allow yourself to risk failure. Then, try again. Make it safe to fail by starting very small, but taking action to move forward. Relearning. Relearning calls for being open to new information, experimenting and building new habits, but starting at a do-able scale. List small steps you can take toward your goal. For instance, to increase a skill, you can train, acquire a tool or, to meet with the least resistance, simplify the behavior you want to accomplish. The more options you give yourself, the better your chances for finding your best approach. Decide on your first step and take it. Celebrate your results to reward your brain for trying a new behavior. Execute little, contained experiments. Course correcting is part of relearning. Economic sandboxes allow us to make safe to fail investments to relearn, acquire new skills and capabilities, and deal with uncertainty without blowing up the entire business. A behavior is the result of motivation, ability and a prompt. If you want to stop a behavior, take away its prompt. A prompt can be external, like a sound. It can also be internal, such as the cue to eat something when you pass the refrigerator. For example, if you're spending too much time on Facebook when you check your phone, remove the Facebook app, which is the prompt on your phone for that behavior. Breaking through. Breakthroughs come when you've had time to reflect on the new things you've learned and to see which changes work. When you're ready for another breakthrough, re-enter the cycle of unlearning. People with a fixed mindset believe intelligence and talent are static and can never improve. People with a growth mindset believe in experimentation, improvement and breakthroughs. Rigid managers with fixed mindsets may push their employees to evade accountability, but managers with growth mindsets inspire their teams to take risks and run tests in search of more improvement. Breakthroughs arise when you consider what you learned from experimentation. 
people can't break out of their old patterns of thinking and doing, because they get stuck in execution mode, they don't take time to pause, think or reflect. Leaders at a large financial institution wanted to develop greater agility, but their leadership conditioning defined success as the ability to execute the steps of a plan. That strategy doesn't lead to breakthroughs. Insight comes from reflecting on your efforts and their results, and making course corrections. Outcomes, not outputs, are what matter. And that is what ultimately governed the leadership decisions at the financial institution. When its executives discussed the possible results of their actions and then reviewed the actual outcomes, they transitioned into breakthrough territory. For this company, the breakthrough came when the CEO came to understand that his old way of doing things was not agile. He sent out a memo to the entire company, admitting his shortcomings and demonstrating his openness to new ways of working. He modeled unlearning. If someone doesn't value what the system values, then he or she is not the correct member for the system, for your organization. As you assess your organization, ask what is the smallest effort that would bring the greatest impact. Start with a hypothesis of what you hope to accomplish and a way to measure success. Feed this information into the next cycle of unlearning so you can make better decisions based on new information and new behaviors. Scaling up the unlearning process takes conscious practice. Relearning can take you and your organization into unknown territory, but open greater potential. Unlearning your management style. Command and control and micromanaging leadership limits organizational potential. They lead to learned helplessness and actually encourage employees to stop trying to solve problems, especially if they are afraid of making an incorrect decision. Effective leaders set the intention of an initiative and define the desired results, then they allow their team members to figure out how to get there through trial, error, reflection and the cycle of unlearning. Coach your team to improve the member's competency and to empower the people closest to the situation to make effective decisions and to be accountable. Customers can help you unlearn. Don't wait until the end of a costly project to get feedback from your customers. Don't imagine their problems. Listen to them. Leaders actually have two groups of customers, their employees as well as the people who use their service or product. Consider feedback from both sources. Try to remove any fear your employees feel about giving your truthful reports. You need high-quality information so you can make informed decisions. Take advantage of social media platforms for fast feedback from your customers. Tesla CEO Elon Musk uses Twitter to send quick, personal responses to customer complaints. Then he implements change quickly according to direct customer feedback. When customers see that you're responsive, they will vest more deeply in your product and will be more loyal. Unlearning across organizations. The successes that the U.S. National Aeronautics and Space Administration NASA, enjoyed in the 1960s led to excess confidence in its systems. Teams stopped stress testing them. When NASA's Orbiter Challenger exploded right after launch in 1986, the agency's executives believed it was an unfortunate fluke. But several engineers had warned against the launch. The Challenger disaster shocked the organization, but the Columbia explosion in 2003 shattered its complacency. The defect that caused the explosion foam shedding was known but tolerated because it had never caused damage. NASA had to unlearn as an organization, as did its leaders and employees. NASA designed new protocols based on the experiences of its employees and on honest conversations about failure. 
High performance individuals and companies create systems that allow the people closest to the richest sources of information to have the authority to make decisions. To design for continuous, organizational improvement, gather data about the current system at every level. Separate productive competencies from those that don't work. Socialize the conversation. Customer test system components. Challenge complacency. Realize that failure is part of innovation because you don't know what you don't know, but effective learning systems can uncover mistakes before they become catastrophic. The Columbia explosion occurred because NASA normalized foam shedding, though it deviated from optimal performance. No one foresaw the possibility of disaster. The purpose of a learning organization is to help others make better mistakes, not the same mistakes. In 2009, a technical issue arose with the shuttle discovery. Engineers recommended against its launch to figure out the problem. This time NASA followed their suggestion. The delay cost three months, but led to cost-saving innovations. To prevent sliding back into complacency, NASA holds a day of remembrance to reflect on the astronauts whose lives were lost in the quest to explore space. Top organizations like NASA build in opportunities to gather information, experiment and learn. Create better incentives. Executives are conditioned not to take risks. Generally, firms reward them for doing what they've always done and squeezing productivity from existing systems. Bonuses drive executive behavior, but discourage risk-taking, a recipe for short-term success and long-term failure. Leaders must define the system-level outcomes they want in the future and align them with individual efforts, including experimentation and innovation. The way you reward your employees will determine where they focus. When you relearn your incentives model, ask if incentives are necessary or if you should change the behavior you reward or the incentives you offer. Maybe rewards don't have to be financial. Unlearning to innovate. The NHS National Program for IT NPFIT, was a big idea in the UK, digitise patient records, and securely connect doctors and hospitals. It cost £12 billion and proved to be a boondoggle. A lean, 30-member team eventually untangled the mess. They had to unlearn everything they thought they knew about risk management on large-scale projects. They moved all work in-house and shifted to open source programs. They adopted an iterative and adaptive approach to problem solving. The team mostly flew under the radar of the bureaucracies they were navigating. You must unlearn what you have learned. Yoda. Team leaders broke the large plan into smaller projects, each requiring lower budgets. They began with little adaptations and changes. Proving success in small ways is critical to progress. Expect a stage where the middle is a mess as people move out of their comfortable habits. The NPFIT team worked with a robust subset of system users to prioritize which functions to roll out first. The failures of the previous system informed the group's successful choices as they used challengers and naysayers as grist for the mill to feed counterbalancing information into their next cycle of unlearning.